Electrical components on a car today are very often controlled by an electrical switch called a relay. Examples would be the fuel pump, uh, AC compressor clutch, cooling fans, even window motors, and of course others. The relay in turn is controlled by an electronic control unit, in most cases, or a computer. And if you do all the electrical troubleshooting in your shop, you know that when you have an issue with a circuit or component that is controlled by relay, you really have two circuits that you have to consider. Is it the circuit that's supplying the power through the relay to the component, or is it the circuit that's turning the relay on and off that has the problem? Well, here's one way that you might find life a little easier using this tool called the U-Activate. Now, the U-Activate is, my first thought, it reminded me of, of a breakout box. And what it does is it takes the place of the relay. Now, there's a whole bunch of different harness connectors so that it will fit just about any relay you run into. And then that harness plugs into the back. Now, don't worry, it's staggered pin, so there's no way for you to connect it uh, backwards. There's only one way it's going to go. And then when you look at the tool, you're going to see there's uh, some nice features on it. Number one, we got the two terminals at the top, and we have two in the front. There is a toggle switch here in the center and a couple of LEDs, one at the top and one at the bottom. So let's start with these two at the top. The two on the top are linked to the switch in the relay. In other words, they connect the power to the primary component, whether it's that fuel pump or compression clutch or cooling fan. And when you first hook it up, you want this in the off position, and then you're going to toggle the LED down with power going to the relay and it's going to light either green or red. And what that means is if it's green, the green terminal on top is the side closest to the battery. And if it lights up red, then it's the red side that's closest to the battery. The other side is the other side of what would be the relay switch going to that primary component. It also allows you to turn that primary component on and off whenever you want to just by flipping the toggle. No more jumping across the relay, or the relay sockets, rather. Now, the loop at the bottom allows me to take a current waveform or amp measurement of that primary component. I can put my low amp clamp right there and hook it up to my multimeter just to get an amp reading, or I can hook my scope up to it. Of course, I can hook my scope up to the top here, too, if I want. No problem. I can hook my scope up to any of these terminals. So whichever method you prefer for the component and system that you're diagnosing. Now in the bottom are two more terminals, red and green, and a little LED. And if you said to yourself, well, I bet you the LED glows red and green, you're, you're right. <laughs> when the circuit is closed, when the control unit turns the relay on, or you turn it on using the scan tool, yes, that LED comes on that you know that has been turned on. And those two terminals they go along with the control side of the relay. What is turning the relay on and off? So this allows you to check that. You know, if you want to know whether that side is working, all you got to do is plug this in and look to see if the LED is on. Now, let's say, for example, fuel pump. Don't know if that fuel pump's being commanded on. Plug this in, and when you turn the key on, that light will come on for a couple of seconds, won't it? Absolutely. So that's one way that you can check that. Now, the other nice thing about it is if you want to do a voltage drop test on that control side, well, this is your load. So we always tell you, you get as close to load as you can to do your voltage drop test. So once you've identified which is power coming in to the load and which is the ground side of the load, then you can hook your multimeter or your scope again to those two terminals and you can measure the voltage drop in the circuit on the control for that to take care of the control side of the relay. And again, there's a lot of ways I know that you can do it without adding this tool to your toolbox. But if you're doing a lot of the electrical tr troubleshooting and you're finding yourself doing a lot of these types of tests, it does make life a little easier. Go check it out, aeswave.com.